and good morning to everyone and to especially our church families at home either watching or reading my talk. I will start with the little verse at the top of the card that was on the table by the candles. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Amen. Today I bring you stories of finding the lost sheep and the lost coin, then of how God paved the way for two of his chosen people to fulfil the work he had chosen for them. In Luke, we heard of the two parables of Jesus. First, the shepherd searching for his one lost sheep, and second, the widow searching for her one coin. Then in Timothy, we hear of God seeking out the one very lost man, a man who would go on to start many churches in Turkey. A man, Paul, who in Timothy verse 15 says, King Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and I am one of them. We then move to a very more modern story of a child who became known and loved throughout the world. So what are today's two readings telling us? Our first reading from Luke tells us two short stories. The first is the shepherd with a hundred sheep. He loses one and finds that lost one. He puts 99 of them safe somewhere in his their pen, then searches night and day to find their one lost sheep. Not an easy job in a rough terrain. You see, sheep were a valuable asset and probably would have been bred for the temple sacrifices. And even more so, even though the sheep would have known the voice of his shepherd, they are rather daft and wander off anywhere to hunt for fresh pastors. But the sheep was lost, and the shepherd searched until he found it. The second part of the reading is of a woman who lost one of her ten coins. Again, a brief story with a deeper meaning. Have you ever seen pictures from the Middle East with headdresses of coins round their heads? Well, in biblical times, this would have been their entire wealth and would most likely have been their dowry used to obtain a suitable husband. The 10 coins were very valuable and to lose one would have been critical to the woman's future and a good marriage. The woman searched and searched until the coin was found. This is what we hear of the woman and the shepherd, but the parable is told in a language that people of the day would have understood. The parable is Jesus giving people of the time a parallel to use to explain how God will search for his lost people from one end of the earth to the other in order to find them. I now move on to tell of two of God's chosen people, each chosen for a special purpose. Our reading from Timothy tells us of Paul. Paul was a ruthless persecutor of the followers, followers of Jesus, an untrustworthy man, a very unlikely recruit to be called not only to follow Jesus, to become a, but to become a reader in his own right. A bit of a wow story, especially in his conversion on the road to Damascus. But that's another story you could read about in Acts 9, verses 1 to 19. God really chooses the most unlikely people to do his work at times. By recruiting Paul, God changed his mistrust into a total trust and faith in God. Paul had been totally lost. 
God knew it would be hard to change Paul, yet did so in Paul's amazing conversion. And God found Paul and was pleased. Paul was blessed. My second choice of a chosen person is in our very recent history. Nearly 100 years ago, a child was born to a loving family, a family of status. The child grew in God's faith and was of a very pleasant nature. And God watched over the child and knew the child had a special calling. The child grew to womanhood, married and had two lovely children. Then God's calling set in place a very hard and difficult set of circumstances that finally led the woman to his given path for that very child. The child was, of course, Elizabeth, not born to be a queen, but by God's help and will became Elizabeth II. God's choice was right. The child, with a very pleasant nature, became our own very lovely natured queen. God gave her such incredible capabilities. Elizabeth didn't go to a traditional school, but went on to gain many gifts of speaking other languages, piano playing, driving and vehicles and repairing them, the gift of being able to speak to many people and to put them at ease, and the largest gift of all, her amazing faith and trust in God. God seeks his chosen people. He never gives up. It doesn't matter if you're a Christian and feeling a bit lost, or if you've never had a faith, or never stepped into a church before. Nor do we need to be famous. Nor do God's plans for you need to be huge. It might be simple, simply, to help a friend or a neighbour or a stranger. You never know where that kindness will lead the other person that you helped to. We all have the gift of God's love to show us how to reach out and to reach our full potential and to achieve God's will for us. God is with us at our side throughout every day of our lives. God loves all of his people and will help, comfort and guide us all. All we have to do is to say, Hello Jesus, my friend, welcome into my life. I close this using the prayer on the prayer card. We pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the life of Queen Elizabeth and all she meant to us. Comfort her family in their loss and be with us as we mourn her passing. Give us strength to live our lives more fully for you. Amen.